I see you smile Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Air of salvation, purchased of God Born of the Spirit, oh, I'm washing His blood
God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. He is our mighty fortress. He is our strong tower. If you have a need in this place, we're believing for your miracle. And we're gonna transition into our miracle opportunities right now where we will have ministers up here to pray with you and to pray for you, believing that your need will be met in this place today. We're encouraging you to step out in faith knowing that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that which we can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. of my soul I give all all to you with every breath that I breathe every song I choose to sing I give all all to you through every low through every high I will trust I will trust you through every storm through every trial I will trust I will trust
Somebody testify to that right now. There's just something about that name. Oh, there's just something about that name that brings freedom, that brings healing, that brings victory in my life, that brings provision. Oh, he's my provider, he's my protector. Oh, he's my healer. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's no name that's greater than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody all across this place. Could you just begin to worship him for what he's done in the house already? Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift you up, mighty God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the presence we feel in this house already. Lord God, and we know you're not finished yet. Oh, we know you're not finished yet. Amen. Amen. We're going to transition into our tithe and offering right now. Do our statement of faith together. Amen. If this is your first time, we say it like this. Welcome home. Come on. I think we could, we could say that all together. Welcome home to all of our first-time guests, returning guests. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. God is not done yet. We're going to continue to see great things happen. I don't know about you, but every time we walk in this place, it just gets better and better and better and better. It just keeps going because we're a revival church. God is adding to his church daily. 
things don't great things don't just happen on Sunday and on Wednesdays, but things are happening Monday, Tuesday. Bible studies are happening all across this place, and we give God the glory for it. Amen. 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 Let's say our statement of faith together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family is saved and walking with God in perfect health and abundance in order to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going into this place and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it, shout amen. Bring your tithe and offering for me. Say your miracles here right now. Oh, what a good looking bunch of people's in the house today. Oh, yes. Just before service started, somebody came up to him and said, We've been asking for prayer. They told the mother before birth this baby would be born with a tumor, they would proceed after the birth of the child. They reached out to the church and we prayed. And as we prayed, God heard. That baby is born, it is healthy, and no tumor. That's the kind of church I go to right there. Woo. Come on, see us right here. Wave your hand. But you see that right there standing? Last week it was in a wheelchair, but after the word of God went forth. I wish I had an apostolic in this room right now. As a matter of fact, you got a tumor in your body right now. I speak authority over it in the name of Jesus. You got a sickness under death in your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Somebody rejoice. Somebody praise him. Somebody love him. I don't do to a miracle church. I... Miracles happen here. Powerful things happen here. give you one better than that. Brother and 
Sister Harrington, they have stock in Burger King. Or they should have. They go there a lot. They were there this week eating. Invited this young lady to church on Easter Sunday. And she told me this morning, she said, I'm almost sure that I gotta work next Sunday so I'm not gonna be able to be here, but I wanted to come today. Well, let me tell you what happened to the lady that works at Burger King. She just got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, God walked in, but she's... I wish somebody would get excited about being a part of a run. You gonna make me do it? You gonna make me do it? You gonna make me do it? Come on, Holy Ghost, give me a revival. Give me souls, give me the harvest. Let me calm down a little bit. I ain't gonna do it. Calm is not in me. Uh, Well, I'm glad you're here today. I'm ready to preach. To all of our guests that's here this morning, to all of our first time guests that is here this morning, thank you for making our day. And we say welcome home. You're a part of the family. You're a part of the family. Part of the family. And following this service today, my beautiful bride and I, Denise, we want to take some time and meet you in the foyer. Make sure that we get to spend a few moments with you. We also want you to know if you did not receive an invite to a welcome home dinner, that will be taking place in a couple of weeks for you. We want you to get that invite so they can call you and set up a time. This is a lunch after our Sunday morning service where Denise and I will sit with you and we'll just have lunch and have a really good time. Talk about everybody we know. Just just have a good time. Amen. Easter Sunday's next Sunday. If everybody in this room right now would be here next Sunday, and you'd bring one person with you, we'd have to set out seats. Come on, I'm trusting God that God's gonna do it. Come on, I'm trusting God that miracles is gonna happen next Sunday and the power of God is going to move. Hallelujah. Before I get into the word, I've got to do this. I've got a lot of friends that's here today visiting. And I don't want to miss anybody, but I'm gonna recognize one family that's here today. 15 plus years ago, this family came into our life. These little twin girls have grown up to be beautiful young ladies, sang like nobody business. These little gals can sing and their daddy, they talked their daddy in to bring them on their spring break to see Denise and I. That's the reason he's here. Let's welcome the Cannon family to be in service with us today. What a beautiful family. Uh, Brother Cannon and his family served on our staff when we pastored in Missouri uh, for probably 12, 13 years or so. And uh, they were a great blessing to us there. And now they serve in Humboldt, Tennessee at uh, Brother Seth Wilkerson's church. And and uh, we're so thankful that you are here. Matter of fact, I'm going to take you to lunch when we leave here today. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he afterward, he got hungry. He was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, 
It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. I'm not talking about the pinnacle down at Bristol. He setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, it is written again, let me tell you again, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up to an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, hey, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I want you to look at somebody right now and I want you to say these words. I want you to say, tell hell I am not coming. Come on, I want you to tell somebody over here. Tell hell I'm not coming. Now you people on my right, your left, shout at somebody over across the church, say, hey, tell hell I'm not coming. Come on, you people in the center, come on, tell somebody right now. Tell hell I'm not coming. Come on, if you believe what you said, rejoice in knowing that you're on your way to heaven. You may be seated. Today as I stand before you, I'm very stirred in my spirit that many are being taught out of heaven. The scripture teaches us, let no man deceive you by any means, For there shall come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the Antichrist, the son of perdition. Now I know some people believe that the great falling away has already taken place. Now the man of sin has not been revealed because we do not know who the Antichrist is at this present, but I do believe that he is alive and he's walking the face of the earth. The church is under more scrutiny now than ever before. People, everybody say people. People are laying under the pews. People are sitting on the pews. People are sitting in our parking lots and there could be someone even watching this service right now trying to catch us in a manner and in a way so they can bring charges against you and I and the church of Jesus Christ. We are feeling the pressure that we are being pushed and stressed on every side that is around us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not feel the pressure of this world on you, then I challenge you to get to a prayer room near you as quickly as possible. We are in a spiritual war. We are in the fight of our life. But even in the fight of my life, I need somebody to tell hell I'm still not coming. Some of us in this room today, We are being attacked on every side. Somebody said, Pastor, you all about this spiritual warfare stuff. I'm telling you, I'm all about it. Here's the reason why I'm all about it is everything we do has a spirit attached to it. It's either of God or it's not of God. It's either anti-God or it's for the enemy. And I've come to preach to you in the Holy Ghost right now. The trumpet is about to sound. Jesus is about to return and he's not coming back for some limp-wristed, watered-down, coward people. He's coming back for a church that knows their God and those that know their God. Somebody needs to call hell right now and tell them I'm not coming, I'm not coming, I'm not coming. This is happening. Some of us are doing things today that this time last year we would have never thought about doing. 
Some of us are allowing things to slip into our life and allow God to slip out. We're allowing these things to happen that this time three months ago we would have never thought about doing. We are letting voices speak into our lives. These people that are speaking into our lives, they're not moving towards God, but they are moving away from God. You hear pastor right now and you take it, you, you take counsel from pastor right now. God is not gonna lift you out of one place and put you in a place that's lesser than the place where you are right now. Let me explain myself. God's not gonna pull you out of an apostolic truth believing church and put you into somewhere where they don't believe that fat meets greasy. Somebody needs to call hell right now and tell them, hey, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm staying in the church. I'm staying in the church. I'm on this solid rock and nothing's gonna shake me. Oh, I hear the signs and the sounds are among us. Well, we've done it this way for years and it's really not scripture. It's okay. Okay, hell. I'm gonna talk directly to you right now. If it's in this book, I cannot change it because I am not the author of it. But Satan, let me give you a little bit of wisdom right now. You didn't write this book either, so you cannot change it. I want you to sink in the spirit right now and get a mind for the rapture of the church and say Jesus is coming soon and he's coming back for me so somebody get on Facebook and tell hell I am not coming some of us are looking for a devil uh huh some of us are looking for a devil with a pitchfork and a pointed tail with two horns sticking out of his head. We are looking for that because that is what someone in their minds have conjured up that the devil looks like. Well, let me tell you what the devil looks like. He looks like that person trying to talk you out of heaven. Oh, you ain't hearing it yet. (laughs) I'm gonna let me dig a little deeper. I'm gonna tell you what the devil looks like. The devil looks like somebody speaking in your ear that says, hey, you don't have to do that. It really don't matter. Just throw in the towel. Just, just go somewhere where they allow this and they'll condone that and another. That's what the devil looks like right there. I'm gonna tell you, if the devil can talk you out of heaven, he'll talk you right into hell. And I've come to tell hell and every M there, we are the church triumphant and we are no pushover. We will, we will be victorious. We will overcome because heaven is our goal and I'm going there. Oh, let me do it for a moment. I wish I had a believer in this house right now that says I've been fighting too long. I'm not giving up. I've been fighting hell too long. I'm not surrendering now. I've been fighting hell. I'm not going there. I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight. We are in a war. I said this statement in our Bible class. I'm gonna sit and repeat and repeat showing up today at 11 a.m. But we are fighting the spirit of witches and witchcraft. Uh, let, let me go ahead and say it right now, young people. I want you to hear, Pastor, right now. I want you to zone in. But you hear, Pastor. Not everything that wears a dress and talks in tongues is of God. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck and quack like a duck. It's a quack. (laughs) That identifies as a duck. Not everything that walks up in here is of God. Not everything that talks in tongues is of God. That's the reason why I need you to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost and to walk in the Spirit and the great divine. But I'm gonna tell you right now, coming in on Sunday and doing the Jesus shuffle, getting you a few goosebumps on your chill bumps, but walking right out that door and going back to your movies and to your ungodly characteristics and going back outside those doors, dressing like floozies, looking like floozies, acting like hoosies and floozies, men looking at pornography, laughing at every rude joke and everything around. Come on, we got stop this stuff. We gotta pull out of this. We are the church triumphant. We are a holy people. We are a separated people. 
I need somebody to tell hell, this preacher ain't coming. I need somebody to jump up in the Holy Ghost and say this apostolic is not coming. I made up in my mind. My mama prayed too hard. My daddy prayed too hard. My family suffered too much for me to throw in the towel. But on this Sunday morning, I rise up. Somebody call hell. Tell them I'm not coming. Oh, oh yeah. Just a few miles from here. Witchcraft stores are opening up. I'm gonna tell you, right, oh Lord, you need to get in your minds right now. Hell, you're not taking my family. You're not walking down the hall and taking my children. You're not driving across town to take my grandchildren. You cannot have us. But if the Lord himself was tempted, the devil said, Here, let me call you up to this pinnacle. We're going to have a little talk. We're going to share coupons. We're going to talk a little bit about this and a little bit about that. And out of the middle of nowhere, the devil, boom. And then he says, that didn't work, so he takes him up to an even higher place. And says, if you'll bow down and worship me, I will give you everything you see. I'm going to tell you right now, she may be beautiful. She may look like Jennifer Lorez, but it ain't a God. Uh Uh-huh. Might look like Tom Cruiser. It ain't a God. It only lasts for a second and for a moment, and it will destroy your life. And then all you are left with is the bruises, the scratches, and the scars of what hell did to you. I want you to hear this preacher right now. I'm telling you, well, pastor, if I don't hurry up getting married, I don't know what in the world's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do. You need to bury your head in this altar. You need to bury your head in the book and begin to talk in tongues daily and begin to pray daily and let the Spirit do the work for you because you cannot do it by yourself. I'm preaching to every young person in this room right now. I'm tired of you being educated by our school system. I'm tired of you being educated by the uncle down the road. I'm tired of you being educated by Tic Tac and Tic Tac. I'm tired of you being educated by Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna educate you today. Hell wants to kill you. Hell wants to take you out. But there's not a joint large enough. There's not a high that'll take you high enough. There's not a drink that can, amen, take your body and do with it what it does that is better than the name of Jesus. I need a young person right now to get on your phone and call hell and tell hell I am not coming. If the Lord himself can be tempted, what makes you think we're going to, we're going to escape temptation? Oh, pastor, you're not tempted, you're the pastor. Oh, Lord. If I'm honest with you today, will you come back in a few Sundays? Devil tempts me all the time. Yeah, you know how he tempts me? Just go ahead and slap them. They won't feel it but a few minutes. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. That's right. That's right. Just go to that website for just a few moments. Won't nobody ever know? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you because you'll get mad and go start another church. I'm talking to me. Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Nobody will ever know I can do it in silent. Nobody will ever know. Just, yeah, just go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'll go ahead and message that married lady. It's going to shock her so much. She ain't going to tell her husband because it's going to intimidate her. And what will happen is I will manipulate her into doing what I want. Boy, we got quiet in here. Hey, Pastor, did, did, did you, you switch sermons? No, I'm, I'm right, right here in the Holy Ghost. I'm right here where God wants us to be because you know what? If the devil will tempt me with that, what is he tempting you with? What is he tempting you with? 
And if that, oh, I, I, I'm so holy. God, God ain't gonna allow him to tempt me with nothing. No, no, no. Everybody in this room is, is born in sin and shaping in iniquity and we're just a few days from trouble and if we keep doing what we're doing, we're gonna, we're gonna miss heaven. But I need somebody in the room right now to put what you're doing in the trash and set fire to it and burn it. You need to get some accountability on your cell phone and your Xbox and your computers. You need to make sure what's coming across the airwaves in your car is uplifting God and not some M&M rap junk that is taking us down and pulling us out. I'm gonna tell you right now, oh, Brother Dainsworth, there's nothing to that. Oh, no, 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 you've come too late to tell me. I'm telling you what we allow in this mind, it will def- it will, uh, it will take us to places uh, that we never thought that it was going to go. Oh, they're, they're just friends. Uh, oh, no, no, no. The devil has sent them to take you out. Uh, and I've come to tell the devil of all hell right now, you may put a witchcraft store in Kingsport and Johnson City and Bristol. You may open this. You may open that. Uh, but I'm standing on the solid rock of ages. And Come here, Cameron. Get up here. <laughs> I'm mad at hell right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. We're taking Kingsport. We're taking Bristol. We're taking the college. In the name. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to call hell. Tell them we're not coming. Somebody needs to call hell and tell them we're not coming. Oh, oh. oh. Well, they're doing this at that church over there. They're allowing this at that church over there, but they're not apostolics. They're not Jesus' name. They're not called out of darkness. I need somebody to get on that phone, call hell, tell them I'm not coming. Snapchat hell, tell them I'm not coming. Oh, I'll sit down just a minute. They're gonna think you're like me. The devil, the old fox, the lion's heat, good for nothing, the robber, the home destroyer, the marriage destroyer, the church confuser. If he is bold enough to talk to his former boss that demoted him out of heaven and gave him the boot in the seat of do nothing, he was kicked out. If he is willing to march his little fancy right back up in there and talk him out of heaven to a pinnacle. What do you think he's gonna do to you? I can't even say no to chocolate. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, let let, let me go here. Since since I'm out here today, I may not be back next Sunday. You may not let me come back in. But, but, But if the devil can do that, He'll talk you into drinking that alcoholic tea that they've got baggaged and marketed up that's just sitting out there in the middle of the aisle. So he can get you addicted to alcohol. Oh yeah, oh yeah, what they call them, wine and spirits. You're exactly right, they ride on that one. There's wine in there, but so is their spirits. Uh-huh, that's right. Yeah, let me tell you the reason why you want that alcohol is because when you drink that alcohol, it does something to your brain and it puts you out, puts you out of it. You don't know who you're hitting, you don't know who you're screaming at, you don't know who you're cussing, you don't know who you're going home with. But I guarantee you, if you get what I got, you'll know where you're going, you'll know who you're with, and you know how you did it. Come on. You won't get out there and smoke you some marijuana, put it up in little gummies, uh, put it in your cookies and cream. You go right ahead and do that and you'll wake up addicted. But when you get what I got, honey, it's greater than marijuana. It's greater than Sister Marijuana, sister. I wish I had somebody in this house that would get on the phone and call him. Hell, I'm not coming. Somebody get on the phone and tell them there's a youth group from Christian Life Center. We're coming to heaven. There's a mom and dad. We're coming to heaven. Oh, if he's bold enough, y'all, y'all, y'all sit down. Y'all, y'all, sit down. y'all gonna make me be long-winded. If the devil will tempt God, what makes you think he's not gonna tempt you? And 
And the devil is not going to show up in a pitchfork. He's not going to show up with a red cape. I'm going to tell you what he is going to show up in. He's going to show up with that slick tongue. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. The devil's got a long tongue. Some of us got long tongue. Yeah. I just stepped in the Holy Ghost. Y'all feel that? Some of you will say it on Facebook, but you won't say it to the book. Am I helping you yet? I like it when I go from preaching to theologian. I love it every time. It does something to me. What happens is, is the devil will tempt us. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just going to go on the record. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to go on the record. Devil don't tempt me with alcohol. He knows I'm scared of it. Tell you right now. Devil, devil don't tempt me with that nasty smelling marijuana. I'm going to tell you. People say, oh boy, that makes you feel good. No, it makes you stink and look silly. That's what it does. And on top of that, it burns your brain cells. Uh-huh. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, 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 you want me. The, 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 the devil knows that he's not going to get me with gambling too tight with my money. Don't be coming to buy and asking me to buy a scratch off. I ain't scratching nothing but my back. Uh-huh. Oh, the, 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 the devil knows that he's not going to get me by taking that extra change from the waiter. I felt something on that. Some of y'all called that God's blessings. No, that's called stealing. Oh, I just diagnosed a mental illness right there. Y'all like how the Holy Ghost did that? No, no, no. The devil knows there's certain things that he's not going to get me with. So he knows not to even tempt me with those things. But there are some things the devil tempts me with, like running red lights. Oh, it drives me to drinking every time. Am I helping anybody? There's certain things the devil knows that he's not going to get you with, young ladies and young men. Sister, there's certain things the devil knows he's not going to get you with. But the things that he knows he can, he will tempt you. Not once a month, not once a week, but daily. But daily. The enemy knows that if I can tempt them, then I will eventually get them. The devil doesn't care if you've been serving God for 30 years, but you had a drinking problem. You had a smoking problem. You had a lying problem. You had a cheating problem. You just had problems. It can be under the blood for 30 years. In one temptation, you give in. And you're just as hooked as you was 30 years ago. I want you to hear me and hear me well today. There's not a porn side, a game inside, a single side, a drug side, a vape party, a gossip party, a self-righteous attitude. There's not enough money in this world that's going to talk me out of heaven. Let me tell you what will talk you out of heaven. Let me tell you what will talk you out of heaven is when you allow the devil to talk you out of church. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Pastor, you ain't preaching to me because I'm here. I'm just telling you advance for Wednesday night. I'm just telling you in advance so when the enemy does come 
you have already been told that if I don't pray and I don't fast, then the devil will talk me out of heaven. When I am not doing what I know to do, that's when the devil comes and he tries me and he tempts me and he tries to discourage me. I am telling you, there is nothing that gets hell more upset is when a red hot apostolic church that knows the vision and lives the vision that is working day and night to pull people out of hell. Hell doesn't like it when we're working overtime to save people and pull them out of the very porch of hell. But I want you to hear it loud. I want it to echo loud in hell today. We will not be talked out of heaven. Devil, you couldn't talk Jesus off of that mountain and you're not gonna talk me out of this church. Yeah. Hell, you couldn't talk him out of that mountain and you're not gonna talk me out of holiness. Hell, I... You couldn't talk him out of that mountain. You're not going to talk me out of giving. Hell, you couldn't talk him out of that mountain. You're not going to talk me out of my worship. Hell, you couldn't talk him out of that mountain. You're not going to talk me out of my marriage. Hell, you couldn't talk him out of that mountain. And you're not going to take my kids from me. I'm staying here and I am going there. Oh, clap your hands if you believe it. Yes, my family is fighting hell right now. Yes, my mind is fighting hell right now. Yes, my health is under an attack right now. Yes, people talk about me and they're doing it right now. Yes, people talk about my church and they're doing it right now. Yes, people say I will never be nothing again. Yes, people have said he will never get to be nothing ever in life. But I want you to hear this preacher. The devil tells lies. Oh, you ain't hearing it. Is you the devil? No, you're not the devil. The devil's lying to you. The devil tells lies. You know why he tells lies? Because he's a liar. Not only is he a liar, but he's the father of all lies. And if another lie is gonna be told, the devil was a part of it. Now, the devil can't make you do it, but he's a part of it. I know it, he knows it, and you know it. So why are you letting some little good-looking little chick talk you out of heaven? She pretty. Yeah, yeah, she gonna be pretty. She always gonna be pretty. Oh, I got a girl, and she is pretty. She's Holy Ghost filled. Oh, let me go ahead and say it. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Ain't nobody in the church for me. I need a man. I need a woe man. They're in a church somewhere, an apostolic church somewhere. But you got to go. You got to get up and go do something. Get off your PlayStation game. Ain't no woman going to want a man going to play around with a game all the time. I need a few women to say amen. amen. I thought for a minute I was down there at another church. <laughs> Hell is trying to deceive us. Hell is trying to take us out. But I'm not letting him talk me out of heaven. I'm gonna tell you right now, I was on vacation this week with my family. My grandbabies, my, my youngest daughter didn't get to go. She had to stay home, stay home, make a living for us. And uh, she wasn't able to go. And uh, there's this restaurant there called Ford's Garage. I tell you, I preach against everything but eating. And uh, Ford's Garage is, it, it, boy, all you Ford lovers, you know, You'd like eating there because every Ford they made was in that building that didn't run. It was just there for looks. And, and I'm just kidding. Y'all know I'm kidding. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. I wanted to eat at Ford's garage. 
one of my grandbabies see them old antique cars. And it was right next door to Olive Garden. You know that fake Italian. <laughs> Got one preacher in the house with me, bless God. We pull up to Ford's garage and them two little babies in the back seat. We want a olive guard. We want a olive guard. We want a olive guard. Okay, calm down. We go into Olive Garden. I look out the window of the Ford's garage. Why did y'all want Olive Garden, Asher? Because it's got these little game machines that sits on the table. You gotta be kidding me, kid. I let you talk me out of some fake Italians so you could play a game when I wanted you to see antique cars. You know how long it took for him to talk me out of Ford's garage? About a half a second. I wonder how long it's gonna take hell to talk you out of heaven. For the fake Italians. Am I helping somebody? Is God speaking to you right now? I said it last Sunday, I'm gonna say it this Sunday right here. We are building a church at the gates of hell. Hell knows we're coming. Hell knows we've got an army of young people. Hell knows we've got an army of hyphen, young age adults. Hell knows we got some mamas and daddies that's not letting hell come in that house. Hell knows we got some elders that says, I've been standing for 70 years and I'm not going anywhere now. Hell knows that we are united in purpose and cause and we're gonna be hell's worst nightmare. I'm telling you right now, I'm not letting the devil talk me out of heaven. I'm not, I'm gonna do everything in my power to keep him from talking you out of heaven. We're building a church at the gates of hell. 70 plus years we've been in this city. And hell, you can put a witchcraft, vape shop, marijuana joint on every corner in this city. But we're staying right where we are. Hell, you think you've defeated the church, but we are still standing. I'm gonna tell you right now, the closer we get to the rapture of the church, we're gonna have to make some crucial decisions and we're gonna have to take a stand and pastor's gonna have to do things you may not even understand. But I can tell you right now, when you make up in your mind that you don't have to live for God by yourself, you don't have to live for God alone, I'm not going to take this from hell. When you make up in your mind, I'm not gonna let hell talk me out of heaven then you are unbeatable, you are undefeatable. I'm speaking to people in this room right now that you had to get in your car and drive to church by yourself because your spouse didn't want to come. Because you may live in a home where you are the only apostolic that is there. Tell you, when I was a child, When I was a teenager, I would dream about the rapture of the church taking place. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it scared hell right out of me. If you ever woke up sweating, the sheets wet with sweat, you shaking uncontrollably, and in your mind you were lost, you didn't know where you were. Oh, my pastor would, Bring out that big old chart, Brother Johnson, from the top to the bottom, stretch across the sanctuary. And he'd start talking about that old big old giant with feet. And, and man, he'd just go through there and, and 70 weeks and all this. But then he'd get to this point, I'd never forget it. He said, there's gonna be, there's gonna be these little bugs that's gonna bite you. And they're gonna be let loose and they're gonna go crawling around on the ground. They're gonna go and they're gonna be over everybody's house. They're gonna be loosed everywhere. I'm gonna tell you, that's before I even knew television existed because we preach against that stuff. I did sneak and watch the king, but wasn't that king, Jerry Lawler. 
these bugs, man, they just were rolling around everywhere. I went home dreaming about them little bugs, little things of peaching me. Because I was lost and I didn't make the rapture. You know what cost me the rapture? I'm gonna tell you, in my dream, I wanted to smoke a cigarette so bad, I don't even know what they taste like, but I could taste it. So like, I, I don't like coffee, but I can taste it every once in a while, just nasty, nasty. I'll tell you, they're gonna be freestyle soda pops in heaven. Hopefully they'll put a cocoa bar for y'all or something. In my dream, that's what cost me heaven. I'm telling you right now, that seems so simple compared to the things that we're fighting today. I'm telling you right now, I feel this so strong in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to a young person right now. I'm talking to her mom or daddy right now. You are letting Satan talk you out of heaven with the number one lie that he's always told and he's still telling it today. You have enough time to make it right with God. That is the biggest lie that Satan could ever tell you. Because nature, nature teaches us. Nature teaches us right from wrong. Nature teaches us that when we do right and wrong, doesn't it not? So Satan's lies has to come to tell you, you've got plenty of time to make things right with God. I'm telling you right now, somebody needs to make up in their mind right now, I'm, I need somebody to tell the devil, I'm not coming. Have you ever invite, been invited to a party? And at the party, uh, you invited to a party you know you shouldn't have been to, shouldn't have went to, shouldn't have even been invited to it, but because of your connections, you got invited anyway. You had to pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm not coming today. Something's coming up. Somebody needs to pick up their phone in the spiritual world and run to this altar as fast as you can and get here as quick as you can and say, God, that disagreement over holiness is not worth going to hell over. That disagreement with if I should be friends with them or not is not worth going to hell over. I need somebody in this room to make up your mind right now that what I am doing is not worth going to hell over. Pastor, you, you don't understand. I'm addicted and I can't give it up. Yes, you can. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a generational curse. We'll stop it. It stops with you. It don't have to go to another generation. Who will be the first one to get up out of your seat right now and run to this halter and tell hell, I am not coming. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm telling you, I feel this in my spirit so strong. Submit your there, yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I'm gonna tell you what we need. We need an altar of repentance here right now. We need an altar of repentance here right now. Come on, push your way in. Come on, there's people here that have been touched by the word of God. Come on, come on, push your way. Come on, push your way. Somebody needs to tell hell, I'm not coming today. I'm not coming today. That's it. Come on, that's it. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You Come 
evil. Hell wants to stir trouble. And hell will use us. We can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's Lord. All it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Here I am, I surrender, it's Lord. You. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I created. <laughs> it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about it's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come on, every young person, come on, every young person, longing just to breathe. Come on, make up your mind. Your word. Come on, let's hear it every mom and dad. I'm making up my mind. I'll bring you more than Come on. a song. For, For a song is not what you have required. Oh! 
about them. It's all about you. I'm not going to let the devil talk me out of heaven. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've been through too much. It's We're not going to have you. nothing. Up. It's all about you, Jesus. Come on, here's what I feel the led to do in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, God's filling people with the Holy Ghost, renewing them in the Spirit. Come on, everybody that will. Come on, come on, come on, you, you whole roll of young people, I want you to come up here. Right there, everybody on that roll right there, come on. Come on, get up. Come on, come on. Y'all come on, come on. Just make me a line right there. Come on, Courtney, you, you a good leader, just keep going. Come on, that's it. Come on. Oh, get, come on. Come on up here, Lord. You, you good. Come on up here, sit. Come on, my and Megan, come on. My and Megan, you come on. Come on, give me some. Where's Chloe and Sierra? Emery, come on, come on up here. Come on, Zoe. Come on, y'all, come on. Come on, get, come on. I saw Sawyer. I saw him dunk. It's all right. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you know what hell wants? Hell wants every one of these young people that's up here right now. Come on, that's it. Come on. Come on, children. Come on, y'all all right? Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on, that's it, Corey. Oh, I can't see out there real good. Come on, give me some young people. Come on up here. Somebody said, what you doing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what hell is after. Come on. I'm gonna show you what hell's coming after. Hey, we're going to the water. I need somebody to dunk this fella. Come on. There you go, Brother Holloman, you're headed right. Brother Cameron Poe, y'all go. I need somebody. Come on, this is what hell's coming after right here. Say, Pastor, you've done lost your mind. No, I know exactly where my mind's at. Hell's coming after our kids. Come on, I know this ain't all of them. Come on, come on up here, baby Harvey, you okay? Come on, look at this. This is what hell wants. This is what hell's coming after. Let me tell you what's stopping it. Let me tell you what's stopping hell from getting this. I'm gonna show you. It looks like this, Brother Jerry. Come up here and just stretch your arms out like this. Stand right there. Brother Shane, come here. Stretch your arms out like this. Come here, Brother Bowen. Stretch your arms out like this. Come on. Come here, Brother Johnson. Come on, Brother Hurd. Stretch your arms out like this. Come on, Brother Harrington. Come on, come on, come on. You see this? You see this? This is what's stopping hell from getting our kids. Oh, oh you ain't seen nothing yet. Brother Eves, come stand right here. Brother Evans, come stand right here. Brother Blake, come stand right here. Come on, Katie, come stand right here. Come here, Brother Dallas. Come here, Brother. Sister Jessica, come on. Y'all come stand right here. Let me tell you, we're more than a one-dimensional church. We're more than a one-dimensional people. We are the people. If you're gonna get our kids, you're gonna have to go through them. But to get to them, you gotta go. You gotta go through the church. Somebody needs to call hell and tell hell you're not getting our kids. We're pushing it back. We're come on, young people. Come on, young people. Get your hands in the air. Come on, young people. Come on. Come on, begin to pray. Come on. Come on, begin to praise him. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, take the hand. Come on, take somebody's hand. Come on, take the Come on. Begin to pray for him. Begin to pray for him. 
phone. Somebody send a text message. Somebody call hell. Deliverance is happening. Come on. Stretch your hands and pray protection. Stretch your spirits and pray protection of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, I didn't have to face as a young person. But you're doing it and you're winning the battle. And tonight before you go to sleep, plead the blood of Jesus over your mind and say, God, I am going to sleep with peace tonight. Mitchell, you pray that prayer. I'm going to bed tonight I'm not going to have dreams or nightmares, but I'm going to dream about going to heaven. I'm going to dream about seeing Jesus. And together, we're going to win. 
and we're going to heaven together. I'm going to heaven with you, car, whether you like it or not. I'm gonna go to heaven with you, bub, whether you like it or not. Because I'm not going to hell. I'm not gonna let you go there if I can help it. That's right. That's right. I'll be praying for you. I, I, I know you. I know you. I'll be praying for you. Turn around and look at somebody in them seats and say, I'm going to heaven with you, whether you like it or not. Good job. Good job. I'm going to heaven with you. I mean, I'm going to heaven with a sound man. I'm going to heaven with a production team. I'm going to heaven with the ushers and the hostess and the Sunday school teachers and the preachers. I'm going to heaven. And I'm going to take you there with me. Could we lift our hands one more time to the Lord? We love you, holy God. We thank you for what you've done in this house today. Thank you for the one that received the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the one that was baptized. Thank you for the tumor that was talked about that is gone, that is no longer there. We thank you, Lord, for the miracles you're giving Christian Life Center and your precious people. God, I'm asking you, Lord, now. God, as we leave this place, but not your presence, let us stay in the mind of prayer. Let us return Wednesday night for an evangelistic service of healing signs and wonders and miracles. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church shout amen. Shake somebody's hand. Go share this service that just happened on Facebook. Tell about the miracles. Tag somebody on Facebook, tell them you love them. God bless you.